Welcome to The Real News. I'm joined again by Forrest Hilton, one of the foremost U.S. specialists in Bolivia and South America. Forrest, what's gonna, how is South America watching what's happening in Bolivia? What kind of lessons for, in terms of integration of South America can we derive from this whole process? As other countries look at what's happening in Bolivia, what they see is uh, that the United States will um, try to promote uh, the fragmentation of territorial units such as the Bolivian nation state uh, through the promotion of secession movements uh, in the name of democracy. And we can see this sort of thing in Sulia, in the state of Sulia, in Venezuela, um, and probably countries uh, throughout South America are looking very closely at uh, the role that the U.S. is playing in promoting these types of movements in Bolivia. And probably uh, they will be looking for ways to strengthen uh, their democracies uh, in which social movements are demanding uh, an ever greater share of participation. So uh, it is to be hoped anyway that left and center-left governments throughout the region will realize that their strength in the face of these types of secessionist movements will certainly be uh, the popular and social movements that have brought them to power in the first place. Would you see a change of direction in case of a democratic presidency, Obama or Hillary? Would there be a change of direction in Bolivia? I think it's quite unlikely. I think either Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton is likely to ask the question, who lost Latin America, in the same way that Democrats asked who lost China uh, in the late 1940s, which is to say Latin America has clearly drifted away from the imperial U.S. orbit and I think any Democratic president is, want, is going to want to try to pose as the leader of the United States who can bring Latin America back into the fold. Of course, the way to do that probably would be through some type of revamped uh, good neighbor policy uh, in the region, which of course was forced on Roosevelt by the national popular forces in Latin America in the late 1920s and early 1930s. That would be the most sensible thing to do but it's very hard to see uh, any type of initiatives coming from either Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton in that direction. I think it's much more likely that either leader would simply continue with the status quo towards Latin America, which, after all, was established under President Bill Clinton, uh, particularly when we think of NAFTA and the free trade agenda for the hemisphere, as well as Plan Colombia and the militarization of the war on drugs. I think we're likely to see more of the same, because as I said, uh, these policies were very much strengthened under Bill Clinton and simply continued under George W. Bush. Forrest, suppose Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton would ask you personally, who lost Latin America? What would you tell them? I would say, you know, you really have to study the history of the Cold War and you really have to study the extent to which the United States uh, supported right-wing, uh, radical right-wing regimes of terror against independent nationalism, frequently moderate independent nationalism, in the name of fighting communism. And in, in, in order to avoid re repeating the stakes that were made uh, throughout the Cold War, we would have to know that, that history in the first place. Uh, after the Iranian Revolution in, in 1979, Jimmy Carter was asked uh, by the press corps in Washington, D.C., what he thought of the overthrow of uh, Mossadegh in 1953, and he replied that he didn't think it was appropriate to go into that because it was ancient history. And I think that's precisely the kind of attitude that we need to reverse at the highest levels of leadership if we are to begin to have better policies uh, toward Latin America and closer relationships with the countries and peoples in Latin America.